day the Lord hath made and we will rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it because God is good and he's worthy to be praised. Happy Thursday. Praise God. All is well. And uh, we're so glad to have you joining us today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining the Grace Gang today. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will say something to you that'll uh, set your thermostat. I, I think we have to set our thermostat. And then once we set our thermostat, all those things work together to bring us to the place where the setting is. OK, so you set that thermostat in the room on 70 uh, and it's 80 degrees. Everything's got to work together to bring you to that place of 70 degrees. And so you're setting your thermostat to blessing right now. Everything's got to work together to bring you to the setting of that thermostat uh, of blessing. And so we welcome you today. Let's see who's in the house. Uh, Kenya's in the house. Uh, welcome to the Grace Gang. Nigeria is in the house. Welcome to the Grace Gang. Praise the Lord. St. Louis is in the house. Thank God for you. We send blessings your way in Jesus name. And um, we declare that you are blessed in Jesus name. Tulsa, Oklahoma, Dallas, Georgia, Boise, Idaho, Northern Ireland is in the house with us today. We send blessings to you guys today. Arizona, Connecticut. Welcome to the Grace Gang. We send blessings to you guys. Um, Miami is in the house today. Chicago in the house today. Albuquerque is in the house today. We send blessings to you guys. Norway, Brazil, of course, College Park, Houston. We send blessings to you guys today. Set that thermostat in Jesus' name. Saginaw, Michigan, Decatur, Georgia, uh, Midtown Atlanta, over in India, Brooklyn, New York, South Africa uh, is in the house this morning. And uh, welcome to the Grace Gang. Newton, Texas, Hinesville, Georgia in the house. Maryland, Carrollton, Georgia. We send blessings to you guys. Nashville, South Carolina, uh, Holland, Ohio. Jamaica is in the house. Grayson, Georgia. We send blessings to you guys. Welcome to the Grace Gang. Mississippi, Pennsylvania. We say in the name of Jesus. Andriano project is in the house from mozambique we welcome you guys today the netherlands are in the house welcome to the grace gang today in the name of the lord jesus christ el paso new orleans uh boston's in the house austin texas is in the house today the bronx new york is in the house today welcome to the grace gang this morning we pray that you are blessed today in San Bernardino, California, in London, in the afternoon. We say you guys are blessed today in the name of Jesus. Denver, Colorado is in the house. South Bend in the house. Thomasville, Georgia in the house today in Jesus' name. Arizona, Jersey, Buffalo, uh, New York, uh, Centerville, Tanzania. Michael from Tanzania, blessings to you. Welcome to the Grace Gang this morning in Jesus' name. Uh, Quebec, Canada, Cleveland. Um, welcome to the Grace Gang this morning. We declare all is well in your life today. It's going to be a good day today for those of you who are waking up. And uh, I just pray that you're going to experience the um, leadership of the Holy Spirit and that He'll speak something to you to make the difference in your life. We welcome Zambia with us today. Um, Italy in the house with us today. You guys are welcome to the Grace Gang today. We declare you are blessed in the name of the Father and, and we pray in Jesus' name that the blessing of God will run you over. Yes, the blessing of God will run you over in Jesus' name. Texas, we welcome you guys today, South Africa, uh, Arkansas, Zachary, Irondale, Alabama is in the house today in Jesus' name. We send blessings to you guys today, and uh, we thank God for you 
and we declare that all is well. Upstate New York, Los Angeles, World Changers Churches, the World Changers Nation, all of our international offices, our churches, we send blessings to you today. Australia is in the house today in Jesus' name. Excited we are coming to Australia. Grace Life Conference, amen. East Arkansas, blessings of God to you guys today in Jesus' name. Uh, Wentworth, Missouri, Nigeria uh, in the house today. Uh, we'll be in Nigeria next month. Praise God. Man, I'm so excited about getting back on the road, spreading this gospel of grace. He's so good. Durban, South Africa. Yeah, Uganda in the house today. Indiana. We just say you guys are blessed today. West Virginia. France is in the house today. Iowa. God bless you. We send blessings to you. Welcome to the Grace Gang this morning. All is well in Jesus' name. Amen. In the Bronx, all is well in Jesus' name. Uh, blessings to those of you in the Bronx, man. God bless you. Happy birthday. Somebody is celebrating a birthday today. God bless you. We send blessings to you now. We say you're blessed regardless of where you're coming from, where you're logging in from. We just welcome you to the Grace Gang. And uh, Perth in Australia, uh, welcome to the Grace Gang. Praise the Lord. All is well. And uh, yeah, man, uh, we thank God for what you guys are are doing and how you're living your life according to the word of God and rightly dividing it from the law to this covenant of grace, this new and living way. Amen. And God is so, so, so good. And and uh, so let's go ahead and get Psalms 91 equipped and set this thermostat for today. Welcome all of you in Jesus name. Uh, repeat after me. I dwell in the shelter of the Most High God. I will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. God is my refuge and my fortress. You are my God in whom I trust and with great confidence in whom I will rely. God will rescue me from every trap and protect me from every disaster. I am covered and protected by his outstretched arms. God's faithful promises are my armor and my protection. I will not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor of the arrows that fly in the day. I will not dread any disease that stalks in the darkness, nor any disaster that strikes at midday because God is my refuge and the almighty God of my home. No evil can befall me and no plague can come near my dwelling. God has ordered his angels to guard, defend and protect me and my house. God's armies of heaven will keep me from falling. I will walk unharmed and kick anything that is evil from my path. Because of God's love for me, I will call upon him. He will set me above all my troubles. He will deliver me from all my fears and he will honor me with his presence and power. He will reward me with a long life and he will show me his salvation. I declare now, that I that I am Psalms 91 equipped and all is well with me and my house and my relationships in Jesus mighty name we pray and everybody said amen and amen praise the Lord praise God you know, I uh, I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, what do you want me to talk about? And this last night um, in the morning with the Grace Gang. And I cannot shake this issue of believing, 
right believing equals right living. And, and if we believe right, then of course the consequence of that, or not say consequence, but the, uh, the follow-up of that, the, the fruit from believing right is doing right. Okay. But it starts with believing everything starts with believing. It all starts with believing. And, um, I just don't want that word, uh, to become, um, calloused, uh, you know, believing right equals living right. If, if I believe right, I'm going to live right. But we somehow we want to ignore getting right belief and just go in and start trying to struggle with our self effort to, to live right. Okay. And I'm going to tell you right now, you're not going to be able to live right or do it right without believing right. And our lives as Christians is all about believing. What's this? Jesus. Now you can take Christianity and you can just go in all different areas with it. But at the end of the day, the foundation for our Christian life has got to be victory in believing Jesus. Victory in believing Jesus. So last night, I don't know how many of you got the teaching from last night, Bible study. I talked about condemnation coming because of rejected grace. And, you know, every time I say grace, I have to remind people I'm talking about Jesus because grace is a person. So there are all kinds of weird things that happen when we don't believe Jesus, when we don't believe grace, when we don't believe Jesus. Okay, so Jesus was real careful in John, the book of John we're studying on Wednesday night, to make it clear to Nicodemus that the possibility of condemnation was not thereby removed. And so last night I began to talk to about <clears throat> the different phases of condemnation. First of all, we talked about the fact that, you know, condemnation, which is feeling like you're judged, feeling like you're not enough, <coughs> feeling like you're guilty, feeling like you're just not useful, like a building that's being condemned. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Um, so condemnation first started with this offense of Adam in the Garden of Eden. And in Romans 5, 18, read it yourself. Romans 5, 18, he says, by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. So by the offense of Adam, you know, Break in that one law in the garden. Don't eat of the fruit of this, this, this tree. That offense of one, Adam, brought about judgment on everybody to condemnation. Romans 5 and 18. And then it, it intensified. The condemnation was later intensified in Romans 5 and 20. And in Romans 5 and 20, it says the law entered that that offense by Adam might abound. The word abound means to increase. So he says condemnation increased when the law came in. And so uh, the Bible calls it in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and 9, when the law came in, it referred to it as it's the condemnation of the Mosaic law was referred to as the ministration of condemnation, the ministration of condemnation. And then in James chapter two and 10, remember, remember what he says? He says, if you offend, but one point, one point, then you're guilty of, of, of breaking all of the law. So it was a serious thing. But so here's the deal. When Jesus died on the cross and shed his blood, that condemnation that was caused 
by Adam's offense and that condemnation that was intensified by the entering of the law ended because Jesus shed his blood on the cross. So you remember this? In the book of Romans, he says, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. In it, you're in Christ Jesus. So I thought, well, that's the end of condemnation. Until I saw in, in John the new condition for condemnation, it is in no rate, it, it, the new condition in condemnation, it, it is in no way related to what man does. So it was what man did in the Garden of Eden that bought condemnation. It was what man does by not keeping the law when the law came in that bought about condemnation. So what man did under that condemnation that Jesus set us free from, this new condition, there's this new condition of condemnation doesn't have anything to do with what man does. It is because of the failure of man to believe in or to depend upon the goodness of the Son of God. So in the New Testament, in the book of John, he says that there's a possibility that condemnation can show up not because of what you did or didn't do, but because you've rejected and refused to believe and depend on Jesus Christ. Oh my God. So that's a big deal. Because I know in my heart it's just been just believe, just believe, just believe, just believe. And now I'm looking at, oh my goodness, there's a reason. So let, let's look at this now. John chapter 3 and verse 17 through 18. I'm going to give you a little time to turn, turn there. John chapter 3, verse 17 uh, through, uh, actually 17 through 19. Now, if you're at work, you're going to have to do this later. <laughs> okay. But I check this out now. Now, here's what he says. Now, see if you can see it. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. But that the world through him might be saved. So Jesus is not condemning anybody. He that believeth on Jesus is not condemned. All right. So that's key right there. You believe on Jesus condemnation can't come upon your life no more if you believe on Jesus. But he that believeth not on Jesus, let's look at this, is condemned already. What? He that believeth not on Jesus is condemned already. Not because of what you did or didn't do, but because you didn't believe on Jesus. Now, here's what he says. Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten son, he's already condemned. He's condemned because he doesn't believe in the name of the only begotten son. He doesn't believe in what Jesus has done. He doesn't believe who Jesus was. Wow. Next verse. And this is the condemnation. So he describes this condemnation that's separate from uh, the condemnation that came when Adam did his thing, the condemnation that came when the law intensified it. It's different from the uh, uh, being condemned because of what you did or didn't do. But he says, and this is condemnation. That light and whose light Jesus is, that light or Jesus is come into the world. And men loved darkness rather than Jesus, rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Oh my goodness. This is this is big time. So in this passage, this is this reveals an entirely new cause for the condemnation of man. 
he is condemned because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten son. Wow. Wow. The entire human race came under the condemnation of death by what Adam did. But now we're talking about because you don't believe in the name of the only begotten son of God. You don't believe uh, who, who, who the son of God was and you don't believe in what the son of God did. And so he says condemnation comes on you because you don't believe. Wow. Wow. And, and you know what happens when condemnation comes on you? Sin becomes easier to enter into. Remember, Jesus talked to that woman who was caught in the very act of adultery and dealt with her. And he says, is there anybody here condemning you? She said, no. He said, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. What was he saying? When there is no condemnation, sin doesn't have a, 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 a easy way of coming into your life because there's no condemnation. But when condemnation is there and then after condemnation, fear is there. And after fear, then sin shows up. You, you, you follow what I'm saying? Wow, man. This is this is so interesting. So here's what if I if I were to amplify John chapter three, verse 17 through eight, verse 19. Here's what it would be. OK. All right. So here's what does that look like? OK. And this is what we're talking about. He who will depend upon that which the only begotten son of God is and that which he did while he was in the world is not condemned. Oh, my goodness. Let me read it again. He who will depend upon that which the only begotten son of God is. I, I, I depend on him. I depend on Jesus. I depend on who Jesus is. And they depend on that which he did well what did he do my god he 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 was the propitiation for my sins he redeemed me he reconciled with me i believe what who he is and i believe in what he has done he says the guy that believes that is not condemned all right but he that fails to do so is condemned already and that solely because he does not depend upon that which the son of God has done for him. My goodness, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, my goodness. All right, so let's talk about this thing of, you know, somebody says, I believe, you know, that's that's awesome to say that. But somehow that's got to be translated in your life. It's got to be translated in your living. I believe it translates. See, if you if you were if you if you are, you know, if you're near a chair, OK, and you say out loud, I believe that this chair can support me. You're not going to sit there every day looking at the chair saying, I believe the chair can support me. I believe the chair can support me. Somehow that belief is going to move you into depending on it. I, I eventually I'm going to sit down on the chair and depend on its ability to support me, to actually support me. OK, and it's the same thing with. All right. I believe God. But then it it you, you never move into the place where now you're depending on him. Now you're saying, you know what, God, there's some things I'm dealing with in my life today. I need you to help me. I'm depending on you for this. Uh, I'm depending on you for that. Uh, and then and then you start walking in expectation in your daily day to day living in expectation. And you're the whole time you you're depending on God mentally. You're, 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 you're consciously uh, aware and soaked that I'm dependent on God. I'm going to trust you, God. I'm going to do what you tell me to do. I'm going to, I'm going to allow you to, to lead me. I'm going to learn how to yield to you. You know, wisdom is knowing what to do when you don't know what to do. I, I'm, 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 I'm expecting your wisdom. I'm leaning on your word. Uh, it's much more than a, a, just a mental thing in your head. Well, I believe in my head. But uh, you can't see that I'm leaning on this thing that I say I believe. You, you can't see that I'm relying on this thing that I, I believe. Uh, 
you can't see that there's a dependence on this thing that I believe that, uh, whoo, it's just, you, you know, I, I'm having to break this down because, you know, so many of us, we just say, I believe. And, and then when the time comes for us to believe, see, when you really, when you really believe something, you can tell when somebody believes you ask them something and that same belief is going to flow out of them in their words. You're going to hear it in their words. You're going to see it in their attitude. You're going to see it in their walk. I depend on God. I trust God. Praise God. I try. And, 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 and yeah, that's great. Definitely when trials come. When trials come, who are you relying on? Who are you depending on? What is God telling you to do? Now you can see how vital it is to actually have an intimate relationship with God so you can talk to him and ask him questions about the walk, especially the walk out of out of a test, the walk out of trouble, the walk out of pressure. And God may say, hey, man, I want you to I want you to drink more water. And you think, well, that's not spiritual. Yeah, it, the spiritual part is that wisdom has said drink more water. <laughs> you follow what I'm saying? Um, and we need a relationship with God to help us, like I said last night, not to get too deep. We need a relationship with God to to help to help us to to not get too dumb deep. And we deep ourselves out of out of God's plan and out of God's leadership. It, and the Holy Spirit wants to lead us. In fact, the first act, the initial work of grace. The initial work of grace was to deliver us from the condemnation from Adam to the uh, condemnation that was intensified uh, by the law coming in. But all man now has to do is believe, confess that your sinful state, in other words, get born again and believe Jesus and walk with him um, uh, y'all follow what I'm saying? And and Jesus says this over and over again. You go go get last night's um, sermon, and I and I dig in it a lot more. But here's here's what I want to say. Here's what I want to close with. The present message to the unsaved world is that men are condemned because of their evil doings, but only that that's what that's the message to the unsaved world. Uh. It's because, how do I say this? Um, men are condemned not because of their, and let me let me rightly divide it up, okay? Under the grace of God in this new covenant, men should not be accepting condemnation from the evil things that they do because Jesus has already handled all of that. But now condemnation comes because you've rejected Jesus and you don't believe in him. Does it make sense? We, we see the line, the dividing line from Adam's offense to the offense that came in by the law, men were condemned. Jesus died on the cross, dealt with that. So all you gotta do you know, somebody says, how do I get delivered from guilt? Believe in Jesus. How do I get delivered from shame? Believe in Jesus. OK. And so everything now in this new covenant, new covenant, new testament. Is about believing Jesus. And so the work of the Holy Spirit. Is to convict men of sin because they believe not on Jesus. John 16 and 8. To convict men of sin because they don't believe on Jesus. All right, so what's the deal? Uh, when I don't believe on Jesus, condemnation comes. Condemnation comes, sin comes. <laughs> so we've been working real hard to get people to stop sinning when we need to be getting them to start believing. Get them to start believing. And they won't have to deal with condemnation and the sin will be taken care of, too, because you, you you're working on people to believe. Here is here's what I want you to want you to hear. 
and I want you to see this. The present message to the unsaved world is that men are condemned not because of their evil doings, but only because they reject him by whom came grace and truth. And in so doing, they place themselves outside of the operation of God's grace. I don't want you to place yourself on the outside of the operation of God's grace because you don't believe. But think about it. What is God going to do? You don't even believe. Healing's available through his grace, but you don't believe. Everything's available through his grace, but you don't believe. You don't believe. And you put yourself on the outside of God's operation of grace because you don't believe. And then you let condemnation come in. Somebody says, what's wrong with the believers? The believers are not believing. And that is something I want you to focus in on today. I want you to examine your life. I want you to look at your life. And I want you to ask yourself or ask God to help you see it. Where am I not believing right? Where in my life, where in my life, Am I not dependent on you? Where in my life, I'm not, where, where I'm not trusting you? Because I don't want to put myself on the outside of the operation of God's grace. I believe. It wouldn't be a bad idea if you waked up, woke up every morning and say, you know what? I believe. I believe, Jesus, you're my strength for the day. I'm dependent on you to be my strength for the day. I believe, Jesus, you're my way out of out of out of this situation. And I'm dependent on you for that today. I'm dependent that something's going to happen or you're going to show me something or you're going to ask me to yield something. You're going to ask me to follow. I, I'm dependent on you. I don't know how you're going to do it, but I know you're going to do it. I depend on you, Lord. I depend on you. So, yeah, man. So that that's 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 where I'm like. That's where I'm at right now is like, OK. Uh, maybe this, this thing not working because I'm on the outside of it. And he's asking me to do something just so easy. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Believe God. Depend on him. Receive him. Yeah, man, that's where we are. So this is way beyond the fact that you say I'm a Christian because I go to church. This is bigger than that. This is now I'm a Christian because I believe and depend on Jesus. That's big. I believe and I depend on Jesus. And when I go out of my house today, when I go to work today, whatever you're going to do, I am walking out trusting Jesus to, for my care, trusting Jesus for my protection, trusting Jesus for me being what I need to be today in the lives of other people. Trust in Jesus. He'll show me what to do when I encounter certain situations. This, ladies and gentlemen, is real Christianity. This is a real walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. Trust, depend, believe in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Wow. That was what was on my heart this morning. Um, whew. Put it in your head, man. Think about this thing today. Pray about this. Let the Lord speak to you about this. We're moving from acting like religious Christians to actually being Christians that know our God, a personal relationship with him, and not just know about our God, but we know him intimately and we know him personally. Whew, take a deep breath. I know that was kind of heavy, but, you know, thank God for the grace gang. Gives me opportunity to share my heart and uh, it'd be a blessing to you. Now, I want to ask you guys a favor before we close. Today, we are starting our serious push for Grace Life uh, reunion uh, in July, July the 11th through the 13th. If you have not registered, do me a big favor. If you're planning on coming and you're just kind of putting it off, putting it off, please, if you could register today. It's just something about knowing what we got coming on campus so we can prepare properly 
and may have room for some very creative things. Grace Life Conference is going to be uh, at World Changes Church uh, right here in College Park, Georgia, July the 11th through the 13th. Those of you who came last year, I need a witness. Was it like one of the greatest experiences that you had? It was awesome. And learning to live the grace life, those three days will absolutely get you there. We got a special men's women's session. We got a session for ministers and leaders. Uh, we've got um, sessions for your teenagers, for your children. Um, it's it's entertaining. It's it's learning. It's it's love. It's establishing relationships. There are people who live completely on different sides of the earth and they establish relationships at the Grace Life Conference. I tell you, it would really help us if you guys would just go wild this morning and register. I'm believing for a thousand people registering a week starting today all the way up to July, uh, the first week of July. So do us a favor. If you just take just a few minutes, just register and 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 let us know what uh if you're expecting to come or not it'll be in college park georgia uh world changes church in the world dome and uh, we will convert our whole campus into a convention atmosphere and um july 11th through the 13th to register you can text grace life you if you're on your phones right now text grace life to 51555 just right now Register, text Grace Life to 51555. Or you can go to the website, creflodollarministries.org, and there'll be an opportunity to register there. Those of you who are on StreamYard with me, that's Facebook, YouTube, and uh, what's the little X thing? You know what I'm talking about. Okay, you can register by hitting the QR code right now we have on the screen. And you can we're trying to make it very easy for you to, to, to register. If you have not come, if you did not come last year, do yourself a favor. We've had, we have almost four thousand people that are registered already. I mean, these are people who says, I I promise you, I am not going to miss the next Grace Life as it's like, wow. So if you're on Twitter, thank you. Uh, go ahead and, and 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 you can register there. Do me a favor. I will appreciate that so much. Uh, now, I'm going to go in and y'all going to make me happy. I'm going to go in the office, look at the numbers, and I'm like, look at the Grace Gang. They, 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 the Grace Gang, they love me. Look at what they did. Look at the Grace Gang. Uh, so go ahead and do it. If you're uh, international and you need, like, letters to get uh, all of your paperwork and stuff together, uh, go ahead and do that. Uh, uh, somebody be glad and we were ready to do that. We did that last year. People traveled from all over the world and uh, we're ready to do it now. Somebody just said, I'm already registered. Thank you so much, much for doing that. And uh, we love you guys so much. Now, tomorrow, I think I'm going to continue with this, this, this line of believing God, you know, so we can just really, really get a hold of it. I may preach on it Sunday because it's so heavy in my heart. Maybe there's a time to deal with it. And this may be the time to deal with it. God bless you. We love you guys so much. And I'm looking forward to sharing with you about this Grace Life Conference. You just can't miss it. It is going to be amazing. God bless you. Have an amazing day today. And I'll see you on tomorrow right here on the Grace Gang.